Once upon a time in a powerful kingdom, there lived a merchant called Gobin. Gobin was the wealthiest trader of the country and stayed close to the palace. He had three daughters. The eldest daughter was called Elena. The second was called Greta, and the youngest was Maria. Maria was the most beautiful of them all. One day, the king called the merchant to the palace. Hail, your highness. Come, Gobin, welcome. Your highness, you sent for me? Yes, Gobin. The thing is that we have stuck a huge trading deal with our neighboring kingdom. We need someone trustworthy who can reach the goods there safely. And I want you to be the one to do this for us. On hearing the king's words, Gobin became lost in thought. He was worried about his daughters, for he had never left them alone before. What is the matter, Gobin? Why are you so quiet? Nothing much, your highness. It is just that if I go, my daughters shall be left alone at home. I am just worried about them, that's all. Don't worry. After you go, your daughters will be well looked after. It will be all right. Yes, your highness. Gobin did not want to leave his daughters alone, but he could not deny the king's wish. He went home to bid goodbye to his daughters. He found three pots of rose plants. He gave one pot each to his daughters and said to them, I shall be traveling for work. Don't let anyone come into the house. If you do, I shall come to know through these pots. Nothing will go wrong, father. Don't worry about us on your trip. Gobin bid goodbye to his daughters and left. The next day, the king went to his house with two of his friends. Seeing him coming to their house, Maria tells her sisters, Let us go to the cellar and get wine for the king. I shall bring the key. Elena will bring the lantern and Greta will grab the bottle. On hearing Maria's words, the king said, No, don't trouble yourselves. We don't want anything. We are fine. All right. Did you hear, Maria? The king does not want anything. The two of us won't go anywhere. All right, you don't come, but I shall certainly go. Maria left from there. She ran to one of her neighbor's homes. Open the door! Open the door! Who is it? Who has come so late in the night? Auntie, this is Maria. Please open the door. Oh, Maria, what brings you here so late in the night? Auntie, I had a fight with my sister. Please, let me sleep in your house tonight. Oh, all right. Come in, come in, my girl. Maria spent the entire night in the old lady's house. When Maria did not return, the king became very angry. When Maria came home in the morning, she saw that the roses in her sister's pots had withered, for they had disobeyed their father. She went to her eldest sister's room. She saw Elena standing by the window looking out at the garden in the palace. Maria, you came back. Look, the apples in the garden look so pretty. How delicious they must be. Please go and pluck some for me. Elena? You've grown up, but you still act like a child. Bah! Please, Maria, go. Fine, I'll go. Maria jumped from the window and went into the garden. She plucked apples. Running back when Elena screamed, Maria, they're just ahead, our trees full of lemons. Pluck some of them too, please. Once again, Maria ran towards the garden, and this time, just as she was about to return after plucking the lemons, 
the gardener saw her, he ran after her to catch her. Stop! Where do you think you are going after plucking the lemons? Stop! Wait till I get my hands on you! I'll teach you a lesson! <sighs> Maria pushed the gardener hard. He fell so badly that he could not get up for quite some time. And Maria ran away from there. No one came to know as to who the thief was and where they ran to. Maria reached home. She gave the apples and the lemons to Elena and chided her. See? The trouble I would have got into because of you? From now on, don't ever ask me to do something like this. Got it? Maria left. What she said made no difference to Elena. Elena simply began enjoying her apples. Mmm, such delicious apples. Thank God Maria got them. How else would I have got to taste them? Mmm. Mm. The poor gardener. He must still be screaming in pain. <laughs> the next day, her second sister felt like having the bananas. She asked Maria to get bananas for her. Because of what happened the previous day, Maria did not wish to go there again. But since her sister insisted, she had to go. This time, when she went, the king was strolling in the garden. He saw Maria. Oh, so it is you. Now you shall be punished. The king asked Maria a number of questions, and Maria admitted to the truth. Now the king said to her, For the crime you have committed, I shall punish you in your own house. Come with me. The king left for her home. Maria followed him. The king kept looking behind to ascertain that Maria would not run away. But suddenly, when he turned, he saw Maria had vanished, and there was just no sign of her. A search was conducted for her in the entire city, but she could not be found. The king was enraged, and since then he was always in a terrible temper, and soon he fell sick. For months there was no improvement in his condition. Meanwhile, Maria's sisters were married to the king's two friends. Now they also had children of their own. One day, Maria sneaked into the home of her eldest sister. She picked up both of her children and ran away with them. She put the babies in a beautiful basket of flowers and covered them with more flowers so that no one would know that there were babies in them. Then, she dressed like a boy, put the basket on her head, and went towards the palace calling out, Who will reach these flowers to the king? Who is sick because of love? Who is sick because of love? Who will take these flowers to the king? The king who was resting in his bed heard the voice. He called in the guard outside his chambers. <sighs> Listen, come in. Buy the flowers from the man who was calling out. The flowers outside. The guard went and bought the basket of flowers. He gave the basket to the king. As soon as the king removed the lid from the basket, he heard sounds of crying from inside it. He saw two babies in the basket among the flowers. His heart was filled with love. He wondered how he would repay Maria for this gift. But then he remembers how Maria had insulted him. He becomes furious again. He makes up his mind to take revenge from Maria. Just then, a guard comes in. Your Highness, the merchant who you had sent on that business trip has returned. All right. Tell him to be present in the court tomorrow with a coat made of stones. And if he does not show up, he shall be punished. Yes, Your Highness. Seeing the state of his house, the merchant was very sad. He thought that his daughters had promised him that nothing would go wrong. But he could see none of his daughters there. 
he came to know that both his elder daughters had got married without his permission. The guard got there. Listen, the king has ordered that tomorrow you must be present at the court with a coat made of stones for the king. If you do not show up, you shall be punished. The merchant lamented this turn of fates. On the one hand, no one knew where Maria was. On the other hand, he was scared about the order for the coat. It was impossible for him to arrange for the coat in just one day. How will I arrange for the coat in just one day? Father, don't worry about the coat. You just take this chalk to the coat and say that you have come to take the king's measurements for the coat. The merchant did not understand, but he had faith in Maria. So he went to the palace with the chalk. You came empty-handed. Where is the coat? Your Highness, please forgive me, but I cannot make the coat. Fine. Then get ready to die. No, no, Your Highness. Please forgive me. Let me go. If you want to save yourself, turn your daughter over to me. The merchant returned home without saying anything. He was very sad, thinking how could he hand over his daughter to the king. When he reached home, he saw Maria sitting there waiting for him. Father, what happened there? My child, what do I do? The king has ordered me to hand you over to him instead of the coat. Don't worry, father. You take a doll who looks just like me. The doll's head must have a thread wound around her head, pulling, which I shall reply in yes or no. The next day, the merchant reached the palace with Maria. The king had ordered for Maria to be sent into his rooms. So the soldiers took Maria into the king's chambers. Maria had hidden the doll in the folds of her robes. As soon as the doors closed, she stealthily pulled out the doll from the folds of her dress and hid herself under the bed, taking the thread in her hands. Maria, I hope you are all right. Maria moves the doll's head in a nod. The king kept on asking her questions and pointed out all her mistakes to her. Maria nodded her head in a yes for all her mistakes. Which is why I sentence you to death. The king removes his sword and chops her head off. As soon as the head falls to the ground, the king feels as though someone has kissed his feet. Such love, even after death. What have I done? I have killed you with these very hands, so even I shall not remain alive. As soon as the king was about to cut his own head, Maria comes out from under the bed, and the king embraces her. Then both of them got married and lived happily ever after. <laughs>